Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus A330 pilot and welcome to today's video. Today we want to talk about some of the planning basics for your four-engined Airbus A340 aircraft. Most namely we want to talk about a question that I heard quite a bit when I did my first video on the A340 and also the successive ones and that is why on earth are you planning ETOPS with a four-engined aircraft? After all, an a plane like the A340 has more than two engines, so sure enough, engines turning or passengers swimming, aka ETOPS rules, are not going to apply to that aircraft. Or are they? Well, let's first of all dive a little bit into the history of ETOPS. So ETOPS first came up in 1985, when engines became so reliable that airlines wanted to fly their two-engined aircraft more than 60 minutes away from the nearest suitable airport. Now, nearest suitable doesn't necessarily mean nearest airport overall, it means the nearest one that is actually suitable for operation with the aircraft. Now, back then, the... Authorities came up with rules that defined certain safety standards that aircraft needed to meet and initially that was not just the engine reliance but a little bit later on they also added other things such as the fire extinguishing and the um, fire prevention systems, namely the um, cargo fire suppression systems. And this became a little bit of a problem later on, because while obviously two-engine aircraft like the 767 or the Airbus A330 had cargo fire suppression systems that were good enough that they could suppress the fires for more than 60 minutes, that was not exactly the case for four-engine aircraft, which didn't have such rules at the time. And the same obviously applied to three-engine aircraft as well. So while those aircraft may suffer an engine failure and still have several engines left, there were cases like the Swiss 111, which was an MD-11, which experienced a fire in the aircraft, which quickly got out of control and then the airplane crashed. And that obviously could happen to aircraft with more than two engines engines as well. So after the typical back and forth with the authorities and after enough delaying that eventually most four-engine aircraft were retired by the time anyway, the authorities finally updated the ETOPS rules to the new EDTO rules. And EDTO stands for Extended Diversion Time Operation. You can see there is no more mention of the word twin engine in that like there used to be in the older term ETOPS. Now, ICAO still recognizes the term ETOPS for today's operations, so it is not technically wrong if we say ETOPS nowadays. However, technically speaking, we are now talking about extended diversion time operations, and that obviously applies to any airplane regardless of how many engines it has, to the two-engined A330 all the way up to the eight-engined B52, provided somebody would fly it under civil operations, but that would be a little bit different of a topic. So, with that, you now know that the main driving factor behind applying ETOPS rules to your not only two engine, but also three and four engine aircraft is not the safety of engines, but is the safety of the cargo fire suppression systems, which have to be able to suppress a fire in the hold for as long as the ETOPS certification of that airplane is. Now, from practical terms, there doesn't have to be too much of a change though. Obviously, if you only flew four engine aircraft before, then now there would be such a change. But for those of you who have flown ETOPS on two engine aircraft before, it's exactly the same planning criteria. So if we do take a look at Simri for a short moment over here, planning our Lufthansa flight 416 from Frankfurt to Washington, then you can see that I'm simply applying the very same planning rules down here and that I plan my ETOPS flights under the exact same conditions that I would with a two-engined aircraft. So basically, that means you need ETOPS whenever you are more than 60 minutes, which is the inner circle away from any suitable airport, and then the maximum scenario that you're allowed to use depends on the operator in question. Now, most operators are certified to a 180-minute scenario because 
longer than that requires an enhanced cargo fire suppression system and as you can easily see by the picture on the map over here already even more so if we add some more airports over here the majority of the north atlantic is basically covered by 180 minutes etops rules so there is absolutely no problem flying to pretty much all parts of the world except for a couple of remote locations somewhere down here in the southern pacific ocean with etops 180 therefore the incentive for airlines to invest the money into getting the better cargo fire suppression system is obviously rather low however there have been instances of airlines that actually got those systems and with that uh, target scenario of up to 270 minutes can be achieved for the airbus a340 aircraft now, as far as I'm aware, that's the maximum certification that you can get for A340s. If there may be anything beyond that, then that would be a very, very rare option. I could only imagine operators like maybe the German Air Force that used the A340 as a politician bomber previously. Yes, that's my name for politician transports. So only operators like the German Air Force that um, used politician bombers uh, as A340s would maybe be interested in a longer ETOP scenario than 270 in order to make it possible to, you know, fly from Europe to the Far East without the need for any suitable airport in the area in between. Especially in case of conflict, that may be interesting because suitable doesn't always just mean weather and rescue and firefighting. It also means things like, are you politically allowed to land there? and obviously that may make an airport unsuitable that might otherwise be suitable now the rest of the etops planning is just as always so you've got your entry points then you've got the equal time points which really do make sense calculating if you think about it because we're not just talking about the possible equal time from flying from one airport to the other in case of an engine failure always remember we are also talking about decompressions over here so in a decompression can happen to any airplane, regardless of how many engines it has. A part of the fuselage, you know, may always rip off. So for that reason, having those equal time points here is rather important as well. And the rest of it is really pretty much standard ETOPS planning. So I do hope that you guys found this one interesting and this little excursion here into why ETOPS also applies to more than two engine aircraft leave your feedback in the comments underneath the video and with that out of the way thank you very much for watching as always be sure to like comment and subscribe and if you really love what i'm doing on this channel i would appreciate a small donation through the buy me coffee link in the video description below thank you very much for watching and i'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one